I'm, I, I'm very bullish um, on the long-term viability of Bitcoin. I was going to say, did that surprise that you? That surprised me how much that's really? gone up. I mean, look, at it, it, it is, we, we're creating now a market that has more liquidity, more transparency, and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised, and I would never have predicted it before we filed it, that we were going to see this type of retail demand. So you thought you'd do good, yeah. but not this good. I thought... Yes. yes. Well, iBit is, iBit is your ETF yes. over at iShares. Yes. It's about to overtake Grayscale, which was in the business uh, certainly a lot longer. You look at the gains since January 11th when it first came about. Yes. Have you ever seen this much inflow this quickly into iBit is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. Larry Fink knows what he's doing. He's definitely been orange pilled. He's all in on Bitcoin. It's the fastest growing ETF in ETF history. This is just an update from him. iBit, he knew what iBit was going to do. That's why BlackRock has been buying as aggressively as they have. Have you gotten exposure to this ETF? Have you stacked sats before the big wall of money has started pouring in? What's happening, Crypto Crew? Sean's coming back at you, another cryptocurrency video. Before we get started, if you wanna check out the Bitcoin Bros on our socials, you can check out our link tree. It's pinned in the comments below, but also check out our Patreon. Our Patreon, we got one seat left at this price. After this last member for our community comes in, this price is going up, get it while you still can. An update from Bit Harrington. What are you saying? Bitcoin's chilling around 70,000 and it's boring. This is good for Bitcoin. This is perfect. Yes, it's boring, but you don't want to lose sight. Let's take a look at the charts. Current time this recording, as he mentioned, are right around 70 at 69 and 133. And we see that Bitcoin has had this cool off. This is on the four hour chart. So what do we do? We came all the way up to this 73, almost $74,000 peak. And then we had this retracement. And this retracement was a one, two, three, four, five leg retracement. And that was a bottoming out structure. But look, we coincidentally came and retested this 200 moving average, which moves really slow, but it's up and to the right. And look, since then we've been putting in higher lows and higher highs. And right now we've just flipped this previous resistance right here, it acted as resistance to support. It's a major level of resistance because as you see, when Bitcoin fell down, we sliced through this resistance and look what happened. Once we got back up and retested this $69,000 peak, what happened? We fell off a cliff all the way down to 60,000. So this was a major price depreciation within, this was March 17th until March 20th. So this is one week's worth of price action that basically fell off a cliff almost $10,000. So this was a major level of resistance. Look what happens. We sliced right through it with this major candle and we're coming back and retesting it, flipping resistance to now support and going to have that continuation pattern. But what are we forming? We're forming a bull flag right here. And where's the technical target for this? This will take us up to that $75,000 peak. This is a technical target. So Bitcoin is going to end up putting in a higher high then. And then once we hit these levels, could Bitcoin be up and off to the races again? Because as you see, if we zoom out on the charts, we actually just had a reset, you know, a convergence of this 20 and 200, came back down, kissed it. We could have a continuation until we get a huge extension from that 20 and 200 once again. Every so often, Bitcoin needs to take a cooler, but where is that target? Up to 75K, that's what we see update from CryptoCon. He's showing you in this chart that every time we have a peak, we have a first top and final top in all previous three cycles. And you can look at this based off the RBI double tops. So right now you see a double top here. Back in 2012, 13, we had that first peak and we have a little bit of a cool off, but then we ultimately have that blast off top. You can see the RBI indicator come into this red box from the high volatility box before having the retracement into the bear markets. Look at the same thing, double top action. It's not quite even downwards price action in this one. We just had one candle on the monthly where it had a retracement and then that ultimate blow off top back in 2017 before the bear market. And then last cycle, look what happened. 
relative position came up $65,000 peak. We believe this was the peak. This is an ABC corrective wave. And this was actually the second top, final top. But as you see down here, November of 21 did not register as a top because this was a retracement level. So current value where we are right now, we are not in cycle top zone yet, but we are close. Every time we hit this level, what happens? We peak out, peak out, and peak out. So we could be peaking sooner rather than later. We take a closer look. From where we are right here, if we go up here, just have about, what, two months of price action until that local peak happens. And then the second time, if we zoom in once again, we have about one, two, three, four months of price action. So two months, then four months. And then in 2012, the first time we had this peak, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. So seven months of price action from when we first get into this range here, this first peak here, first peak. So we have seven months, four months, then two months. So once we get right here, it could be a month or two before we get this peak action because we're going to be blasting towards 100,000. The markets could get extremely euphoric. We could get a cool off briefly and then an ultimate last run up in this market. MicroStrategy has been making some noise as well, coming in over 1,900 at the current time it's recording. MicroStrategy, as we've showed you, is in a massive cup and handle pattern. And look what happened. We just broke against some major resistance, blasted up through it but then came back down and retested it and this is a bump and run textbook pattern zooming out on these charts once again so you can see everything the technical targets take you all the way up to the multi thousands of dollars where microstrategy could be going and this is just the first leg could we see a 10x for microstrategy it's all dependent on what bitcoin does from its current price action around 70 but are you holding any micro strategy bags? Speaking of micro strategy, Michael Saylor's weighing in on the latest of how he is positioning his company, micro strategy, in this upcoming bull market. Let's listen to Michael. Hi, I love uh, what you're doing in your stock. In fact, I've made five times more on your stock and derivatives around it than buying Bitcoin. So one of my questions would be, why should we buy Bitcoin? Why don't we just buy your stock? And what do you think the halving event is really going to do to the price? Bitcoin's a commodity. It's an asset without an issuer. Uh, whenever you invest in a company, you're taking counterparty risk. In order to invest in my stock, you should reasonably read 1,000 pages of disclosures. And, and I'll make the obvious point. People in Nigeria can't self-custody microstrategy stock. So, so what we're trying to solve the problem of creating integrity, sovereignty, you know, truth and hope for the world, that's going to be done by a protocol, right? MicroStrategy is, is simply a, a high performance business, right? There's a lot of other, there's a lot of other businesses and we, every business does their thing in, in the world as best they can. So we offer a very particular thing to us. We offer convertible debt to convertible arbitragers, and they have billions of dollars of capital, and they can only convertible arbitrage. So if we didn't give it to them, their capital wouldn't come in the ecosystem. And so that 1.4 billion that I got came from them, that went into Bitcoin. I need to do something for them. It's a complicated something. There's a lot of volatility to it, right? Uh, there's a limit to how much we can do. Can you just buy your stock then? You know, the truth is, I would recommend anybody that's interested in Bitcoin, they should study Bitcoin before they buy anything. And then after they study Bitcoin for 100 hours, I would say you ought to buy the Bitcoin. The real debate ought to be, do you buy the Bitcoin in self-custody, buy the Bitcoin institutional custody, buy the Bitcoin through an ETF? Because what, what about the Bitcoin is the innovation. <clears throat> if you are a professional investor and you have billions of dollars of capital, by the way, I, the investors in my company aren't allowed to buy Bitcoin, nor are they allowed to buy the ETF. Their charter is, here's $10 billion. You have to invest in publicly traded operating companies. So my company is meeting a need for certain types of investors that are sophisticated. Uh, I'm not here to promote my company, right? I expect Bitcoin will be here a thousand years from now. My company won't be, I won't be, right? There's not much to be said there.